Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining me for our webinar this morning on how to accomplish successful digital transformation for insurers. My name is Emma Roloff, and I am an account executive here at Navient. Um, and just a couple of things to touch on real quickly before we get going today. Um, everybody on the line is muted right now um, because we are recording the broadcast, but you'll see on your GoToMeeting screen, um, there is a chat box available for any questions or comments as we're going through. So please feel free to utilize that function and I will keep an eye on it as we go. To get us started, I wanted to just touch on our agenda before we get going today, and then we'll get right into it. Um, first up is kind of the conversation of why. Um, whenever I do a presentation like this, I like to just level set and make sure that we are all on the same page going into the rest of the conversation. Um, so we're gonna start with a little bit of kind of why is this so imperative and why is it important for insurers to um, look at digital transformation now? Then we're going to focus on kind of the two components of a successful digital transformation, starting off with the business transformation side, really focusing on process, and then looking at the systems transformation and specifically the platform on base and how it can be used to build in efficiencies for insurers. So again, just to get us started, I don't want to spend too much time on the why, but I want to make sure that we all are kind of set with the same definition of digital transformation and why it's important. In recent years, insurance companies have really been bombarded with messages about digital transformation and warnings about, you know, if you're not taking steps now, you'll be acquired. And there is some significant truth and weight to that warning. Um, the, but there is a silver lining to it, and that's that the insurance industry dates back hundreds of years, um, back to you know the time where Chinese merchants were sharing risk by distributing their goods across multiple boi uh, boats in case there was a crash or a capsize. Um, you know, we've come a long way since that point, obviously, but I wanted to just point out that insur insurers are no stranger to change. Um, you know, events over time like the Great London Fire have certainly impacted the industry, as well as things like the introduction of the phone and the fax machine. Um, the green screen applications with um, kind of core line of business applications in the first wave of computing. Um, but what we're seeing now is um, much more rapid change and the timeline is speeding. And that's really what makes this so imperative. Time is the single most important differentiator of this wave of change from everything else that we've seen in the past. The rate at which change is taking place now is so much more aggressive that each day that you're not actively taking steps to move your business forward, you're really falling further and further behind. Um, this, this idea of kind of exponential rate of change within technology is known as Moore's Law. Um, and back in 1965, Gordon Moore made a prediction specifically about his business at Intel and kind of computing powers within um, computer chips. But this idea of exponential growth and the, um, the decrease in relative cost and increase in power has held true for over 50 years. And it's really been extended as kind of a universal law of computing power. Um, this exponential growth has really taken us to new heights, um, both in you know business world as well as our personal lives. And the growth trajectory and the possibilities associated with this new um, wave of technology with things like blockchain, artificial intelligence, and robotics means that insurers have to be taking steps right now to set the foundation for this rapid change of pace moving forward. In addition to kind of that quick timeline, there's really three big trends that are dictating this change specifically within the insurance industry. Um, customer expectations being the first, uh, Recently, the Deloitte Center for Financial Services did a survey, and they found that at least one quarter of buyers um, have changed one of their insurance carriers in the last 12 months, and another two-thirds of those um, surveyed switched at least one of those carriers in the last three years. 
Um, to me, this means that if we are not actively doing everything that we can to meet customer expectations, they have no qualms with going to somebody else who they think are going to accommodate their needs more effectively. The insured tech movement and this idea of disruption within the industry is certainly a trend that's dictating change, and not in the same way that I think it was originally thought. Um, insured techs are certainly not going to put in current, or incumbent insurers um, out of business and, you know, analyst firms like Noverica are mimicking that prediction. But what InsurTechs have done is really transform the way that, again, those customers of ours are thinking about insurance and the way that they want to be communicated with, the way that they see insurance working as changing and being disrupted by these new players within the field. Um, and finally, the last kind of trend that we see that's making this change really imperative and incredibly important for insurers right now is the talent gap within the insurance industry. Um, you know, McKinsey and Company a couple of years ago predicted that by the end of 2018, this year, 25% of the professionals within the insurance industry were going to have retired. Um, you know, we're kind of in the midst of that right now, and that's leaving an enormous talent gap and experience gap within the insurance industry. And then when you look at kind of traditionally over the last couple of years, there being a little bit of a, a worker shortage within the insurance industry, coupled with our economy becoming um, much more tight for finding labor, this is a serious issue that needs to be um, a, a focus for insurers. And doing things to build in efficiencies and kind of set your company up to do more with less gives you the ability to kind of combat this head on. Um, in addition to that, millennials work differently. They have different expectations for their employers and being able to digitally transform your company allows you to accommodate those expectations like the ability to work from home or having remote access to processes outside of the office. So where do you start on this journey? And, you know, I mentioned the idea of setting a framework, but what does that mean? Um, you know, digital transformation means something different for everybody. And if you were to try and go out and find a singular definition of what that means, you're going to find something that kind of mimics the graphic on the screen right now in terms of its ambiguity. Um, so for insurers that are really starting to embark on this journey or maybe are halfway through, it's really important to kind of identify what your next step is going to be and how do you set yourself up um, better for the future. According to Mark Bairding, who is a partner at Strategy Meets Action, which is an advisory firm specifically focused on insurance. You can't truly be digital the way in the way that you interact with those outside of your four walls without digital data and processes inside your organization. So today we're going to focus on how digitizing your um, processes and really optimizing your business internally is going to give you the foundation or the framework that you need for your transformation journey. So what does that successful transformation look like? I mentioned during the first review of the agenda that there's really two components, and we're going to dive into this idea of business transformation first. Um, digital transformation does not have to be a massive overhaul of all of your business processes at once. It's an ongoing process that will eventually touch every aspect of your business. But it's important for insurers to think big, start small, and really begin taking those steps now if you want to remain in business and continue to prospect, prosper in the new market. The magic of transformation really begins when we find an effective digital strategy meeting with a powerful systems transformation. A lot of times when uh, companies try to embark on this journey on their own, day-to-day -day pressures are going to drive their innovation groups towards tactical applications to solve kind of main pain points right now. But when you take the opportunity to partner with a company like Navient, what we can do is help you find that sweet spot right in the middle between tactical change and larger strategy. We help you identify those immediate areas of need and really set a trajectory um, step by step for your company to execute on that larger strategy and really implement that organizational change. Our consultants um, have 
decades of experience specifically within the insurance industry. Starting back in the 1980s, um, our principal consultants started their careers with that kind of first wave of innovation that I mentioned with kind of green screen applications and um, that first wave of document management within the industry. Over the years, they took the knowledge that they gained from that first implementation, along with the notion that process enhancements should always come first and kind of proceed technology implementations to really help organizations implement evolutionary solutions. Um, you know, for companies like WPS here in Madison, Wisconsin, they've saved upwards of $17 million by working with our team to take a deep dive into their processes across the organization, set a strategy and a framework for execution of true digital transformation across the business. And over time, they've been building that solution out to really have a very powerful business and systems transformation take place. Um, you know, we really need to start any sort of transformation effort by sitting down and really digging into the strengths of an organization, the challenges that you're facing, and map out a true roadmap of a solution. This gives the leaders in your organization the ability to um, set a budget and a timeline and really meet those targets. And using Navient's methodology and our consultants, um, methodology, we sit down and really work alongside your team to manage the change, focus in on your current processes, and map out that clear blueprint of what your next future, or what the, the next step is for your organization. You know, we've heard from our clients in the past that taking the time to change the process on the front end and not just simply plug in a new system is really what institutes real change. And again, as I mentioned before, this is a two-pronged approach. You can't just simply have a strategy and do nothing to execute, but you also can't just plug in a, a technology solution and hope that it solves all your problems. Um, so the second part of this transformation journey is looking for the right solution to really unlock your organization's potential. Um, and so today we're going to focus in on the on-base product and how it enables insurers to really build in those efficiencies OnBase is what we call a content services platform, um, but simply put, what it does is it helps insurers access information and orchestrate processes utilizing that information. So many insurance organizations are really moving away from selecting these large monolithic technology platforms that take a lot of coding and configuration and moving towards platforms like OnBase that are modular and more fine-grained in the way that they are deployed so that we can put solutions in place rapidly and make a very big impact. Um, content services platforms really help you manage your content, your processes, and casework really efficiently and effectively across the organization. OnBase's main focus is kind of breaking down the barriers that exist today within your organization and the way that information flows and giving you the ability to use one platform to make information move freely across the organization. We're able to take a much more integrated approach to business transformation using OnBase and really implement change in areas across the entire organization. So looking at the graphic up on the screen, we can um, do new business and underwriting processes, focus in on policy services and claims, help you manage the compliance and rules and regulations that we all know come along with insurance, and also um, manage back office or shared services processes like contract management, accounts payable, or even like human resources imply, uh, employee folder management. Again, really breaking down those barriers and taking a very integrated approach to change. As I mentioned, OnBase has a lot of capabilities just there, and it's important for us to kind of break that down and give you the tools that you need to conceptually understand what the platform can do for you. And these six pillars, or what we call of OnBase, are a really great way to do that. So we're just gonna kind of go step by step through that and talk through how those affect change within the insurance industry specifically. So the first of which is capture. And this is really looking at how you get documents and data into your system and manage processes using that information. 
OnBase has really taken a step beyond traditional capture. Um, so previously, capture may have been thought of as scanning in documents um, and being able to digitize that information. And while that's certainly a part of our solution, OnBase gives you the ability to pull in information regardless of where it's coming from within your organization. So paper documents, faxes, being able to ingest emails without manual processes, taking data from your core line of business systems and pulling it in to be able to make decisions. We have the ability to capture information remotely with mobile devices and take pictures and bring all of that into the solution. And in some cases, when we're looking at documents and data, we're able to automate the data capture process, which again takes a step out of um, the manual intervention that your team needs to do and gives you the ability to drive efficiencies even further. A really great example of this, um, an insurer that's using OnBase right now um, noticed that they needed to build in some more efficiencies within their new business process to really be able to compete with the folks um, in their industry. And they were a property and casualty insurer kind of specialty insurer. Um, and focusing on their court processing, what they did is they used OnBase to bring in that input, again, capturing paper, emails, faxes, um, all sorts of document or their court documents, regardless of how they're coming into the organization. And then they use what we call optical character recognition to automate the data capture and classification of those documents. So using a little bit of artificial intelligence um, or that optical character recognition, your um, computer or the on-base system can read the information on that and classify those documents as needed. Then we can pass off that information and all of the associated data with those documents off into a workflow engine to manage, manage the business process and give your underwriters the ability to start working on those documents right away. Or we can integrate with your um, kind of core line of business system and pass off that information to start the process there. The next category and kind of the biggest wide reaching category specifically for insurers is this manage category. And you know, this is really where we pick up off of the capture. So once you have your information into the system, what are you doing to manage your processes more effectively? When we look at kind of traditional business process management, most folks think of limited workflow and kind of linear processes. But within OnBase, we have the ability to not only manage the documents that you have, as well as the data, but non-linear processes and more dynamic, unpredictable support for specific things like claims management and underwriting that maybe aren't just clear cut um, scenarios. Within OnBase, you're able to do anything that you would do with a physical piece of paper electronically. So that means that we can apply digital signatures, um, keep track of notes and annotations on documents, as well as doing things like managing revisions of documents as they go through the system. Beyond being able to just capture data within the system as it's coming in and looking at things like paper documents, we can also take another step in the direction of automation by extending the use of electronic forms to folks outside of your four walls. Um, so we can use electronic forms as a form of application on your website. We could use it as a first loss of notice, um, as well as unlocking the potential to do things like um, mathematical cal uh, calculations on those, making sure that we have controls on required fields so that we can instantly trigger processes among uh, after the submission of that form. That form can then automatically be routed to the next stage within the process. Um, and it really gives you a ton of options to remove paper from the process and increase those efficiencies even further that way. We have some flexibility of how we deploy these forms um, using some really low code options where your business users are configuring those solutions on their own um, for more internal use cases. Or if we wanted to extend these forms out to a web portal and make it more of a self-service option on your website, we can do custom HTML forms that um, integrate with your, your website or any other third-party application so that we can pull that data right into OnBase while still presenting your brand in a very customized way. 
Um, the next kind of piece of the manage category that I want to talk about is workflow. And I mentioned this is kind of our very standard business process management component of OnBase. And workflow really helps you drive linear processes that can be defined by rules and logic. And I think the best way to explain this is to go through one of those examples again. So kind of coupling that um, electronic form alongside that business process management, we can extend that form onto your web portal or again, pull in um, emails that are coming from an agent or file or physical documents that are being scanned into the system take that information and put it into the workflow engine. The workflow engine can be used um, to manage rules and logic that give you kind of that next step of um, automation. So Utica National Insurance Group, who's a customer of OnBase, um, was relying on paper and it was very cumbersome to do their new business processing. And they were processing every single application that came in. And using OnBase, what they've done is leverage those rules and logic to automatically decline applications that aren't a good fit for them. So then once those applications have been declined, any that might be a good fit or need further evaluation are then routed on electronically to a supervisor who further evaluates them for viability. Um, we could further automate that process by validating information with third-party um, applications or websites, depending on what your underwriting process looks like. And eventually, um, again, integrating with your core line of business system to make sure that we have that seamless trade of information across the entire organization. I'm really excited about this other um, this new component of Content Composer that's coming out in on base set, or 18 in about two weeks. Um, Content Composer is provides companies with a true customer communication management system or a CCM um, solution. And it can be a standalone solution or integrated with your full on-base solution. Um, but Content Composer helps organizations really increase their engagement and provide a true omni-channel distribution communication mechanism. Um, we're able to really increase that productivity and efficiency in terms of how we communicate with your customers. But I think the biggest benefit is it gives insurers the ability to personalize their communications to their customers in their preferred format and on their preferred device. Um, we're able to consolidate communication to a single enterprise ready tool that allows you to manage high volumes, complex document formats, and again, gives you that omni-channel distribution. Um, it really promotes your data integrity by pulling data directly from your core line of business systems and on base. Um, and we can even support the integration to provide access to Content Composer from your core line of business system, giving you those efficiencies of keeping folks in the applications that they're used to. Um, and with all of OnBase, one of our favorite things is that it eases the administration burden um, and gives you the ability to unlock some of the template creation and document creation for correspondence out to the business units rather than having to have it all be centralized with complex templates. Some processes, like I mentioned earlier, can't be managed strictly on rules and logic. And that's where this idea of work view or what we call case management comes into play. This really gives you the ability to have processes that are centered around a knowledge worker and a human making decisions in the middle. And what case management does is it provides a full 360 degree view of information um, and really gives you the ability to reduce the toggling back and forth between screens and reduce the time that it takes to find information, giving your team the ability to make smart, informed decisions faster and ensuring that they aren't missing a step within the process. Again, I think an example always speaks more than me just trying to explain the concept to you. Um, so Grinnell Mutual Reinsurance Company has really used case management to transform both their underwriting and their claims processes. They've taken a very integrated approach to how they manage their information across the organization using a custom case management application. Um, they roll all of their policy information together based off of a customer number, a policy number, um, and that solution allows them to have their underwriters and their claims adjusters have a full 360 degree view of 
all of the information and content pertaining to that customer. So they have access to things like medical documents, first loss of notice, any correspondence that's going out via email or notes that may be coming from a phone call. And it's all within one specific interface tailored to their specific role. So, um, this solution is also integrated with Grinnell's homegrown policy management system so that they can um, automatically display updated claims data alongside that policy information. And this has really reduced the amount of time that their employees need to spend searching for information. They're not having to go out to file shares or pick through emails anymore. All of that information is in one place, and they've created a much more collaborative working environment that gives everybody a full view of their, um, their customers and has really increased their customer experience as a result. The next two categories I like to talk about hand in hand, and that's access and integrate. Um, and this is the idea of providing access to your, or to your employees anywhere that they need it. Um, and the reason that I talk about these hand in hand is oftentimes we provide access through integrations with other line of business systems. So OnBase has the ability to provide access to a number or to your employees a number of different ways, both through personalized um, interfaces that are continually being enhanced. So version 18 has some um, better access to information and again, really working towards that idea of providing the right information to the right people at the right time. We can integrate with other line of business systems, provide mobile access, and even give you the ability to um, access documents offline. We've talked a little bit about how we can provide access outside of the organization already and extend it beyond your four walls. Um, but again, um, I wanna touch on a couple of examples. Utica National Insurance has also used OnBase to provide their agents with access to information on a 24 um, seven basis and it's been a really great benefit for them because not only are they increasing the access to their agents through that portal, but they are also reducing their costs by not having to spend the time um, compiling that information, the money printing it or mailing it physically to their agents and that's been a big benefit to them. Mercury Insurance has a customer portal that gives their customers access to their statements and billing information online. Um, and we can even do things, as I mentioned, extending those electronic forms out to customers via your website for things like a first loss of notice, where they can take a picture from their electronic phone, attach that to, or their, their phone, electronically attach that to the form and submit that loss of notice um, much more quickly and efficiently. OnBase also has capabilities to extend um, sharing information with a um, enterprise cloud-based file sync and share solution. Um, we have a customer, Wisconsin Reinsurance Corporation, who uses this as their main portal for communication between all of their reinsurance customers. So they're securely and um, effectively sharing information that's encrypted with those folks um, across the uh, across ShareBase on a daily basis. Integration, um, again, we've talked a lot about this kind of in conjunction with the other um, categories, but again, OnBase has really made it their goal, specifically within the insurance industry, to become a um, integration hub or layer that allows you to really share information freely in real time across all of your applications to drive those processes. So in the PNC area, we see Guidewire and Duck Creek integrations pretty frequently. We can integrate with um, legacy applications that may be homegrown, as well as the full office suite, Microsoft Outlook, and really provide your team with the right integrations wherever they're needed to drive that efficiency. Real quickly, knowing we're short on time, I just wanna to touch on the last two categories of measure and store. So monitoring your processes and business um, performance is incredibly important. And when you have processes being driven within OnBase via workflow and work view, we have the ability to really tap into those real-time business insights using some reporting dashboards and provide that information to your business in a graphical representation. 
This oftentimes is a lot more meaningful for managers that are really looking to visibility into current state to understand if you're going to meet um, deadlines, what is you know, what does the workload look like and does that need to be redistributed? And it gives a lot of flexibility on how that information is presented to provide that business value. And the last category, which is sometimes seen as the least sexy, but I would argue is one of the most important in the insurance industry is um, storage. And that's giving you the ability to store, protect, and destroy your content effectively. Um, OnBase's roots go back to document management and really being able to manage your retention more effectively. But again, access is paramount with OnBase and that also extends to making sure that folks that do not need or have the rights to access your information do not have it. So OnBase really makes sure to protect your information from those outside your organization, store that information based off of rights and really granular user, um, user authorities, as well as manage that retention on the back end so that your team doesn't have to have the burden of paying attention to how long a document has been within your system or um, manage holds for legal reasons. And with that, I know we're up on our 1030 timeline here, so I just want to open it up for any questions that there may be, and I'll stay on the line here for just a minute with that. And otherwise, I will make sure to um, send out a recording of the webinar to all of you folks um, and follow up as well to see if there's any additional questions. But please feel free to jot down my email address or phone number and give me a call or shoot me an email with any questions as they arise.